Um, there is no better place to start really when we're going deeper into the devices with our Environ Hub. As I said previously in the, the introduction video to the range, the hub is the linchpin of the range of devices that we have. It acts as a bridge between these input devices on the left hand side here, your switches, your remote control or the app, in order to send signals to, um, in this case, um, the main function of the hub is to send infrared signals. So what we're going to look at today is how we set the hub up and how it can be used for um, infrared controls for TV um, but also bear in mind any other infrared device where you have an infrared remote as normal and this can replace that for your users. Instead of using that smaller remote that I spoke about in the introduction video, you can use either the scanning remote, switches or the app to control that infrared, de in infrared device. So I'm going to go through the uh, Environ Hub in a bit more detail now. It should be noted as well that the Environ Hub can have paired up to it up to six transmitters. So you could have essentially everything here on that left hand side connected to the hub at any one point for different purposes, different uses and different signals being sent. OK, so we're back looking at the Environ Hub and before we get started, there are a couple of things I just want to go through. First of all, um, I guess the physicality of the hub. So immediately you can see here the way we've got it set up it is plugged into um, a main power supply. Now this is crucial really for a number of reasons, but mainly because the Environ Hub can be wall mounted. So um, keeps it out of the way, make sure that it isn't sort of messed around with and obviously once it's all set up can be left alone, powered on and mounted away from, um, you know, the wires being in the way, etc, etc. The other thing to note about the Environ Hub is the way it's laid out. So in your instruction manual, it does explain this in a lot of detail, but for ease of explanation, I'm going to show you what's important um, with regards to the way it's laid out. So straight away, if I show you the front of the hub, you've got these two infrared sensors. Imagine those infrared sensors are replacing your remote because they will be sending the codes the same as this part of your remote would be sending the codes to the TV. So once we've programmed the hub up, this becomes obsolete. This then sends the codes to your TV to operate it as we'd like using the input devices that we set up. So essentially, when you're using your remote, remember you point the remote at the TV. These two need to be pointed directly to the TV. So wherever you mount it, wherever you set your Environ Hub up, it does have a decent range of distance, but it does need to be pointing these two bits to the, um, these two points to the TV. So bear that in mind when you position your hub. This on the back, however, is the crucial main control panel that we'll go through in the future of how you would set up your hub. So that's the hub um, from a physical point of view. I will go through a bit more detail as we go, but before we do that, here's an infrared chart that we send out with you laminated um, so you can write in what you'd need and wipe it away as you go. The infrared chart offers the 24 codes and we'll explain what that means in a moment. 16 of those codes are single codes, so they are single one option buttons so as though you're pressing one button on your remote. The other eight are macro codes where you can have up to four buttons pressed at one time. So the best way of describing this is if you would like to press an action button such as mute, volume up, volume down, uh, changing the channel up, changing the channel down, something that requires one button, um, you would use any of the 1 to 16 code setup that you have within that. The rest of the eight macro codes you could use for the digital channels that are used nowadays where they're three numbers for a double number channel such as i don't know 21 um, or even um, for pressing four buttons if there is such need to press all four buttons in a coded um, in a step-by-step in a -step, uh, procedure so it offers you that option now looking back at this infrared chart it offers you the section uh, here where you could say exactly what uh, the function is doing so in here you would put perhaps code one single type appliance tv and the function you could put on off so that would be your on off button and as you go down you could set that up for all the different functions that are available once that's set up you can really just leave that to one side almost as if it's a tv guide to use for whoever's using the for whoever's using the device <coughs> now I did put this down a minute ago after explaining the difference, but this is really crucial. Your normal remote is really crucial to setting up the, the hub. So please bear that in mind that you do still need it for the setup. Okay, so now we're going to look at the control panel 
in a bit more detail uh, and show you how to program in um, a few different sort of functions within the remote. So um, we're going to change to a slightly easier view to see this. OK, so this is what the control panel looks like. First of all, you have uh, an LED display here, which will show the numbers as we go through the setup. So that's the numbers of the codes, uh, 1 to 24. We have the code button that you can see there. There's the first button on your left hand side. We also have the learn button already lit up in green there. We have a test button and I'll, I'll explain what the test is for in due course. And we have the pair button. Self-explanatory, it pairs your input devices. This is really important though. This is the IR in. So this is where we're sending the codes to. So when we're setting it up, um, Ignore the TV, even though the TV may come on and do different things as you're doing it because of the remote being pressed, but you essentially press the buttons pointing into the IR in as though this is, becomes your TV. So we're sending the codes, we're teaching the hub what we want it to do using the remote, the normal remote for the TV, so that we no longer need that normal remote and our input devices will become the remote, sending through those signals to the TV at the other end. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up some codes within the hub. Um, so the first thing we'll need to do is just double check which code we're in. And we're into the code 1 there, so you can just see that 1 on the LED display. Now what we want to do with 1 is we want to train code 1 to be power on and off, to be that standby button on your remote. So we press the learn button, and the code button goes green. And that's basically saying it's, it's waiting to accept the code. So we pick up our remote and we press that standby button there. Press it once and it goes orange. When the LED goes orange, that's it saying it's received it once, but it will need to receive it again just to confirm what you've pressed. So we'll press it again, and then it disappears. That's code one set up, and we can test this later. We will test this later. So now we're going to move on to code two. We just press the code button to move to number two. When in there, we press learn. Green light comes on. And we'll go through a couple more um, buttons here. So we'll do power uh, channel up. And so on and so on. I'll code them all in now. You don't need to watch me do it. And then we'll go through the testing in a moment. Just a quick note, when you're uh, coding in the macros, so we're on to code 17 now, you do need to make sure that you code every single button twice so it receives it twice. So in this instance, we'll do 202, so a three button code. So I'll press the two, and you'll notice that the code then changes to orange. We'll press it again. And then we're back to the next one, so we press the zero. And again. And then finally the two. And then again. And then it'll ask you for the fourth one because you do have the option for the fourth one. But we just click off learn and you're away. So that's setting up the macro. You do have to press every button twice. So essentially to do a three digit macro, you would have to press six different six buttons, uh, the three buttons twice in a row. Hopefully that makes sense for the macros. Okay, so now we want to test the codes as we go. Um, and to do so, we do need the TV on straight away just to show that it has power and it's able to send the signals to it. Um, so what we do is we choose the code we want to test. So for this first test, we're going to check test code one, which is power on and off. And we simply press the test button. That then sends the code as it has done there and turns the TV off. You'll see the standby button go on. So now we're on code two. We press test and it should move to ITV. Then on to code three, just to check it moves down as well. There we go. And then finally, we'll check, um, well not finally, penultimately, we will check that our mute button is sorted. So we'd set up code number four for mute. We'll just cycle around, I just missed number four there, but this is just showing that you just need to cycle around sometimes to get to the right one. There we are on number four. So there we are, muting and unmuting. Sometimes you press a little bit harder to get the actual action to work and it's sending those signals. So that seems the code is, is inputted quite nicely. Now one last thing we need to try is our macro. So I'm going to scoot along to number 17, which is our first macro, and I'll press test. And it does 202, which is what I plugged into 
um, the macro there. So that's the hub set up with a few actions. The hub has now become our remote, but now we need to set up an input device, or two, or three, whatever will suit.